Hello. Um, I'm going to uh, make a video about corporate models and about risk. And it really drives me crazy. Now, if you want to follow along, you can go to the corporate uh, model templates and exercises. This is in the uh, Google Drive thing. And then you can go to featured uh, corporate models. And I am going to open the one named uh, Kitty Hawk uh, model. And I've uh, done that a couple of times now. Now, whoops. Okay, so what happened? Yeah, there it is. Now, uh, the overwhelming most important variable virtually always is the, the price and the quantity and perhaps the capital expenditures in any model. The rest is all just little crap. Um, and how do you come up with price assumptions for revenues? And how do you come up with price assumptions for quantities? And how do you come up with uh, uh, capital, reasonable kind of long-term capital expenditures? It's so hard. Let's just, um, well, I'll go through a little bit what this um, uh, objective of this uh, uh, model will be. We've got some scenario analysis, and we want to come up with some reasonable downside scenarios. And then we want to look at what can happen uh, to our um, earnings per share in, in the different cases. Now, uh, and... Uh, We've made a, a number of uh, uh, financial assumptions here, and uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me, I have to wait for. Okay, I was wrong in finding the uh, file, but I started talking about risk, so I'm going to uh, not delete this merger, this uh, model, uh, uh, video, video, <laughs> and we'll talk about this one called the uh, Kitty Hawk Corporate Financial Model, and I'll put the correct uh, model on my uh, website, and the website is here so we'll um, this will be in the website you'll go to the corporate model here and it will be uh, right here I think I'll have to update this um, the video discussion will be here now in discussing risk can I just say I, I should make something we should start by what you cannot do to figure out what the risks of revenues are going to be. One of the things you cannot do is look at about a three or four year forecast and see, well, oh, we've got some historical trends here. Maybe uh, they'll follow some historical trends. Even 2008 wouldn't have been good enough, probably. Because think about Nokia. Think about HP. Think about uh, um, BlackBerry or RIM. Think about uh, 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 airline companies. Think about GM. These are all companies that have either gone bankrupt or lost so much market value it's the equivalent of really uh, going bankrupt. Uh, think about the New York Times. Think about the, 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 the Tribune company. These companies all had dramatic downturns. Number one, you couldn't have found it from a few years of historic data. Number two, you couldn't have found it from anything on beta. Let's be absolutely sure about this. Number three, you couldn't find it from a checklist. So here's kind of a checklist. Oh, we have some examples of factors leading to non-performing loans. This is very good uh, uh, slides, by the way. Uh, factors leading to... Uh, 
macroeconomic factors, low interest rates, I don't know, that's kind of a checklist. I, I, if you don't have a kind of example, cyclicality, well good, okay, hmm, cyclicality would be volatility in revenues, that's what it really would be. Technical obsolescence, certainly that is how do we predict that though it happens so such in such a sudden I believe that that's a big one and impact of the internet well impact of XYZ but that's the same kind of thing over cap capacity now that's a big one if you have a stand that sells sausages in Prague which I've gone to I love to get those and if I, when I go to buy my sausage in Prague, I should be a vegetarian, I know. And my son is. Uh, you know, if they have a bad time, or if their business is going down, they can move their stand. Or worse yet, they can go and become, I don't know what you could do. You could become a, 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 a pizza delivery person or something they're not capital intensive and over capacity in that market would just mean okay let's go and move over capacity hurts when you have capital intensive uh, equipment so that's one rule we can get with over capacity impact of of uh, emerging companies comp uh, emerging uh, 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 emg i assume that it means uh, emerging uh, 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 countries. Um, okay, uh, that's I. I agree. I agree with that. You have to look very carefully at your cost structure, and that's this idea. Well, if you're earning more than your ROI, C, like in that solar business, you better be very uh, 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 careful. Continually reinvent itself. For me, this is all this business of obsolescence and all this, which is so hard barriers to entry we should understand that if they're low barriers to entry to think you can and, and you really have to understand how addiction to a product how Starbucks made you addicted to this coffee and created a barrier to entry like that and whether that barrier to entry can suddenly fall apart that's the really hard one how can you how can you possibly measure these things and then uh, here we have declining demand. Certainly that leads to overcapacity. It's part of all the same thing. High operating leverage. Now fixed costs caused, uh, 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 I believe they caused General Motors bankruptcy, United Airlines bankruptcy, a lot of the other ones. So I, that certainly is the case. But here's the problem. In financial reports, it doesn't say fixed costs and variable costs. Here's the other very interesting philosophical point about this. If every uh, company starts getting variable costs, that may, somebody takes the risk, just the workers who take the risk. Uh, uh, and, and are you going to have to pay them for taking the risk? Well, they probably won't get paid. Failure to downsize France and Germany, whatever and hell that means. Uh, rising input costs. You know, oil for airlines, this is exactly what we're looking at and and that can be a big one you need to look very carefully at the margins not just the not just the price you need to you look at the price versus the variable cost inefficient versus competitors of course but that's you know uh, can you become more efficient uh, uh, how do you measure this efficiency okay technical problems reputational damage you can't predict that with a model I don't know how you'd predict this, maybe a little benchmarking with the model. Working capital out of control. Now that could be the case for some retail companies or something else, but but to uh, think that that's going to cause these bankruptcies. So he's got a couple of good examples. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with a che checklist. Too much leverage, pension deficits. Um, currency borrowing these borrowings in Swiss francs we can find some some things uh, contingent liabilities debt that's not on the balance sheet so you can't see that the whole point of this really is to, when you have a corporate model to say that you can find these kind of things uh, uh, in a corporate model is is uh, very difficult 
so you can uh, continue reading these things. Now, uh, uh, let's go to our model and think how we could really do this. So that this is, I'm, I'm back in the uh, correct corporate model. There's a picture of our company. And we're going to have some scenario analysis. And we would like to make a downside case where we really measure these risks. And uh, um, uh, uh, I'll sh let's go through the structure of the model and the structure of the assumptions, really. Okay, now here's, here's the... This is the, uh, again, here, this is a 727, and this is an old days. These days it would be a 737. You notice there are no windows here on the planes. You have to think about this industry. Now, when people thought about this industry back when this model was done, it was a period of growth after five, seven years or something. I wonder what airport this is. Uh, and then you, you um, uh, 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 so you didn't have any real history on the cyclicality. There was no variation in fuel price, which is a big one on this one. Now, the people who, who, who uh, 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 were valuing these companies, and we can look at the, 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 what, what happened. And let me find the financial ratio outputs. And we're back to this one. We've got a base case and all this one. There, the EPS was predicted to be, in 1998, 1.85, just about this level in the base case. Okay. The company actually, of course, went bankrupt. Uh, in a low case, we, can, we have much uh, lower ones. And then a high case, uh, more. Now, uh, it... This, of course, depends on your strategy of how much you're going to, how many planes you're going to add. In the base case, that's about the, the level they were predicting. Um, in the high case, maybe a little bit more, but not much more. In the low case, th this is much lower in the future, so it's, we're not affecting the near-term uh, earnings per share that much okay and that's exactly what you want to do so I hope this is not wasting your time to really think about the risks but here's how I started it now um, we have scenario analysis I press shift control C to uh, 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 show which is the real input and here's the input. Here's what I thought about. Now, you don't have to ag ag agree with this. The other thing is you can't get any real operating data because their portfolio change, uh, planes change so much. So what I said, let, well, let's look at the new planes versus the existing planes. The existing planes have to operate a certain amount of hours, and that's a big issue. And then uh, uh, the next th the next big issue is can you buy planes efficiently? You should focus on what really really drives the company, and there is no there are no simple rules for this. And then the cost of new planes. This is going to be an enormous input. Is is and that's really the starting point. Is how much does it cost? for new planes. Now, if you have spent a whole bunch of money on new planes and the market tanks, which it actually did because there was an immense oversupply of planes, it's like, you know, our, our, our friend in Prague, if, if suddenly the cost of the new uh, uh, stands go down, well, that's not a big deal. But if you have a, a, a business where you have very capital intensive, you've spent a ton on your assets and suddenly it goes down, or indeed if you spend a whole bunch on stocks or inventories and, and they suddenly go down, well, that's a big deal too. You need to understand that. That might be one of the real first things to understand. Now in this case I used a code number. So what we should have done is right click and go to the, the maybe make the uh, well, let's make this one uh, blue, and let's make the this one perhaps red, and then you can uh, see 
uh, I press shift control C again and in this shift control C it also it, this is again uh, uh, from the generic macros it only opens works because the generic macros file is open you don't have to to copy any files or do anything like that you simply have to have it open and then so this one comes from uh, this this thing and you can press shift control 7 if you'd like that just uh, uh, puts this control B of course makes it bold that's that's using the index function in another video we're going to um, uh, uh, talk about the, all the index functions and offset functions and making a fancy uh, 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 tornado diagram or whatever you'd like okay so that's our first assumption and then the next assumption which is perhaps the biggest of all is what's gonna be the return on new planes now you could say oh let's try to predict the price and all this stuff oh my god I don't know how in the hell you do this you'd have so many different planes but what you could say is look there's gonna be an oversupply in the market if the oversupply in the market people are gonna have to accept a lower IRR if there's a higher supply they're gonna accept a lower IRR so what you could do now if you go to this project analysis basically you could make okay we spend seven million on a plane which is about what they did at the time what's the lifetime of the plane and you can uh, uh, get all of that uh, and then you can say well what kind of uh, EBITDA do we need in in order to get our our, our plane um, let's press shift control C again so we can see kind of what the the assumptions are now if I change this IRR ooh, this comes from the assign uh, assumptions I'll change this one you want the um, uh, just a minute okay this IRR should have been uh, this this function should have given us exactly the same uh, IRR just a minute oh shit uh, 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 hang on I shouldn't have stopped that's the I should have put this as the pre-tax IRR the after-tax IRR comes out to be exactly what you say so this this function this uh, this comes from a a, a function so we can figure out what kind of EBITDA you need on a plane now if you have this EBITDA on a plane what you can uh, I'm sorry if you have this function you can uh, let's look at it now I uh, put functions because I think I had the word function somewhere else and we go um, got a whole bunch of these functions this time this was the new equity issued and uh, where is our uh, okay uh, this is embarrassing because I can't find the because I can't find the function just a minute this is the Ebby Dopper plane sorry about that now what this does is it has kind of a standard now standard uh, 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 dynamic goal seek it's just a goal seek that just works automatically because if you had to put 25 gazillion goal seeks in with all this it would just be pain so this is how you can do it now what I did I'm gonna try something here with you I just said well let's take the start value and the finish value for the EBITDA and we're gonna retry EBITDAs until we get the IRR we want now when we retry that we go through uh, increment you know and uh, to get the increment we well we say well let's start with let's have a start of zero EBITDA and a finish by saying our EBITDA is going to be the enti entire investment that gives us a boundary uh, that is going to give us a, a, a big range and when if we start from zero 
uh, we recompute, then we compute the IR somewhere. We compute the IR down here. Too bad I can't put B, right? I can't. Uh, and this is the so this is the big uh, big one, and it's possible to get an error. Now uh, and then, if you hit, if you suddenly get the IR to be above the target, well, then you you kind of go and start over and make a much smaller increment. Now, why don't we do this? Why don't I make divisor equal divisor plus one? So each time we're going to make a smaller and smaller divisor. Uh, I, I want to. This will screw it up after I set it. So let's change the life to ten. Um, and. <laughs> It did change. It did. Uh, it did screw it up. So take uh, that idea away. I thought. I thought. Okay. Let's try it again. Um, let's try ten. <laughs> oh, this is really embarrassing. Okay. Well, that was really stupid. I just named divisor wrong. Okay. I hope you can see the idea. I kind of got a little off track there, but the the big idea was that you can make a little function co computing the incremental. This is like the marginal cost or the marginal price, really. And then so we can put this in the model now, and down here it has the EBITDA for plane for each one of these things. So we can put the things that really drive this. So if we make the base case, uh, I don't know, 13%, the high case 18%, let's make this 6%, everything changes. And we can even change it over time. We could even put a, put a uh, uh, um, interpolate and have it gradually go down. But you can see that, but this is driven now by the IRR, but it's also driven by the cost of the the planes. And uh, I hope I. This is the history. And then in this low case, we have a lower number now. If we put the low case down here, I'm looking at this EBITDA from a single plane. It it all works, and that only works because you have a function. So let's go all the way back. We have checklists, we have uh, 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 betas, we have history, but we can't, they don't work. We need economics. We need what's the real economics of the industry and what drives it up or down. And I don't know how you'd predict the fall in revenues for Nokia using this. Of course you couldn't do the same thing for Nokia. You, it depends on the industry, and that's really the lesson here. Now, once you have that, you can figure out, well, how many hours of the year are each of these new planes going to run? What's the operating cost for new planes, which is almost doesn't really matter because we started with the EBITDA. We add this together, and we get the new price. And then we can see, well, what's happened in to the, to the price of, of, uh, of planes or price of uh, our, our product, and this ca in the low case, it's gone down like this. Oh, this wasn't going down so much. It didn't go down that much. Oh, did I change some assumption? In the high case, it goes up. In the base case, we can see what happens, but it's all driven by something that kind of makes sense. Now, even that low case, you can say, well, that wasn't really all that low. Uh, and uh, it still killed our earnings. So we really depend now. We can start to see what happens. We really depend on this assumption. And this is what you really need to, to, to focus on. And then you can split the existing aircraft. Well, you can just run that off with the... A, a depreciation assumptions you make, and you can go through the historic uh, flight hours and, and uh, uh, whatever that is. You can see how much each plane is going to run and apply that against those average planes, 
this 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 cost this this price we started with which is really looking at the marginal cost and then you get the uh, uh, totals and uh, let me see if we put the new planes in then we put the admin costs in and interest rates and split up all your assumptions according to this now the other thing you can do over here is is uh, you know s switch the kind of assumption you make so if you want to take it from the 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 uh, uh, beginning or the middle or the end this is all working with the some average if and average if using the true and false up here for the historic switches which I've gone through in a couple of other videos so I'm not going to do this this video was really intended to be a video on discussing risk and discussing assumptions and then once you get it to the financial model put all the history in fine you know and there were some uh, little switches for summarizing the debt and summarizing the balance sheet and all this you can leave a couple of extra spaces here I mean uh, you know we should really uh, select these three shift alternate right arrow to kind of get a little summary and the history was shown with a, a conditional formatting so uh, now you can do this now when you get to the very end well let's just work through the model so we have the, all the historic statements first of course the assumptions we take directly from the assumptions page so I think we better press shift control C now uh, maybe this this blue is a little bit of a different blue but you can okay see what came from the assumptions page now directly that's it all again from the generic macros I would start with the the revenues and the capex and you can summarize it much easily you do all your what I did is I did all my detailed assumptions here and then we can put some summary assumptions on the next page okay and um, uh, then we put our working capital our financing our profit and loss cash flow balance sheet and at the very end get some financial ratios that you'd really like to see okay and uh, I think I'm gonna stop uh, this video I'm gonna stop this video and put the corrected uh, sheet the corrected spreadsheet on the uh, website okay